Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the um, Vampire of Sacramento, Richard Trenton Chase. Can you say hi, Kiwi? <laughs> and in case you haven't ever watched any of my videos before, my name is Kimberly Blackstone and my channel's name is Parrot Crime and Mystery Time. And this is Kiwi and he joins us every time. Can you say hi, Kiwi? He's not going to talk. Okay, so before we get started on our story today, I'm going to go ahead and just throw in my um, pre-recorded uh, video of my backstory. And I do this at the beginning of every one of my videos. So, me and Kiwi will be right back, guys. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Um, first of all, I want to say I'm sorry about the hair. I just had a shower, so it's still wet, so it looks kind of bad. But, um, I'm going to, from now on, I'm going to start, um, start off by telling a little bit of my backstory of why I'm even doing this channel. Um, first of all, I'm doing this channel because doing the research on the crimes and doing the videos keeps my mind busy. And there's a very specific reason as to why um, I have to keep my mind busy. Um, another reason why I'm doing this video is because, uh, the videos and the channel is because I'm hoping that one day um, I can make a little bit of money off of it and um, also just bring some awareness um, about a specific thing and this has to do with my backstory. I want to um, make a little bit of money of it because on it because well I'll explain that in a minute. Well so my backstory. Um, first of all I'm a mother to six kids, four girls and two boys. Um, I only have five living kids left because on December the 28th of 2020, which wasn't very long ago, my son committed suicide. And it's because, and he did it by shooting himself in the head. And I'm the one that found him. So, um, the main reason I'm telling you guys this is because in some of the Sorry. Some of the videos that I do, it mentions suicide and I make it emotional. If, or if I, things to do with guns, I get emotional sometimes. So I just wanted to explain why in case I ever do do that. Now the reason I want to make money off of this is because I want to start a foundation in my son's name. That will help families. Everybody thinks about the expense of the funeral, but what they don't think about is maybe the cleanup after something like that. You have to pay to have it cleaned. Um, and they don't think about the fact that sometimes family just needs to take time off work. And they still have to pay bills, so sometimes they don't get that luxury, luxury uh, or that need met to be able to take time off work. So, I'm hoping that one day these videos may do some good and I may be able to start that to help families in this situation. So, that's my story, guys. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I need to do this. And that's why sometimes I may get emotional in the videos. Just if anybody's out there that's watching, that's having thoughts of suicide, it's not worth it. The pain don't go away. It just goes to the family members. It just passes on, so don't go away. Just go get help. Because it's out there.
Now for today's story, I do have to give a disclaimer. There is sexual content and there is very descriptive um, description, very graphic description of crime scenes. So viewer discretion is advised. Okay, so who was the Vampire of Sacramento and how did he get his name? Well, first of all, he got the nickname the Vampire of Sacramento because he actually drank the blood of his victims. Now, Richard Trenton Chase was actually, um, he was a serial killer and he had six um, people or six victims within a month. Um, so, he was, luckily he got caught after that one month and after that six people. Richard was born on May the 23rd of 1950 in Sacramento, California. Now, I couldn't find in his parents' names, but what I could find about his parents is that his parents was very strict, and they got very violent with him sometimes, and he was actually um, subject to beatings at times um, throughout his life, his childhood. By the age of 10, Richard was showing signs of the McDonald triad. And what that is, is bedwetting, what, um, cruelty to animals, and setting fires. And it's, there's a theory and a belief that this is the road or the beginning of psychopathy. So he was at a very, very early age, he was showing signs of mental disorders. Richard's mental disorders, they intensified in his teenage years. Um, he started, he became a drug user and he started showing signs of delusional thinking. Um, so everything, just everything, all of his disorders and everything just intensified. Richard did have a few friends. However, he could not maintain a relationship with a female. Um, due to his bizarre behavior and he couldn't he couldn't keep an erection now Richard did go to the doctor and try to get help for this um, but they said it was due to uh, the um, drug use and the mental disorders and the repressed anger and um, they they said he would have to get help with those things first before they could help him with him not being able to to keep an erection. After turning 18, Richard actually moved in with his friends, um, but that wouldn't last long due to his heavy drug use and his wild behaviors, and his friends actually asked him to leave. However, he refused to leave. He just wouldn't do it, so they ended up leaving. And this forced um, Richard to move back in with his mother. And last long Richard living with his mother either, he actually became convinced or thought that his mother was trying to poison him. So he actually moved into an apartment that his father, because his mother and father had split up, so his father actually paid for an apartment for him and paid the bills and everything for him. So Richard moved into that apart into an apartment by himself. Richard started to obsess over his health. Um, he started to have really like paranoid episodes and he would go to the hospital, to the emergency room, and he would say things like that somebody had stolen his pulmonary artery, that his stomach was backward, and that, his, that even his heart had stopped beating. Um, people would say that he would sometimes hold oranges on top of his head because he said the vitamin C would help. Um, he eventually, um, they did put him in the hospital and, uh, was that he was diagnosed with, uh, QES, psychotic schizophrenic, and then after they got him on medicine for that, he was released. Richard was still just really convinced that he had health problems, that the doctors wasn't helping him, so he thought he found a cure. So what he would do was he would take small animals, he would kill them, he would drain them um, of their blood, he would drink their blood and disembowel them and eat various parts of their body. And in his mind, this was helping cure his health issues. 1975. 
um, Richard actually took blood from a rabbit and injected it into his veins. Now, because of this, he actually um, suffered from blood poisoning and he was involuntarily hospitalized. Um, and the doctors actually diagnosed him with schizophrenic. So they, they, at this point, they knew that he wasn't safe to be out on the street. Richard was treated with the usual drugs um, that they would use for this type of thing. And that was, they had little success with that. Um, so then doctors was just convinced that it was because of Richard's heavy drug use from an early age. Now, um, his, you know, his psychosis remained intact. Um, and that never really was getting any better. But now Richard, shortly after all this, was found with two dead birds and the blood had been sucked out of the, the birds where Richard had actually sucked the blood out of these birds. So then he was moved to a hospital for the criminally insane. 1976, um, the hospital and the doctors um, come to the conclusion that Richard was no longer a threat and that he could be released um, to the care of his parents. Um, and his mother actually decided shortly after his release that he no longer needed the medications, so she stopped giving them to him. And she even went as far as getting him an apartment and paying everything, buying his groceries, paying his bills and everything like that. Now, Richard's mental disorders, they, they got worse. They completely got worse. And his need for animal blood and organs changed from animal blood and organs to human blood and organs. He now thought he needed the blood and organs of humans to cure his illnesses. So, this is where the victims come in. Kiwi, what are you doing? Can I help you, sir? No, Kiwi. Can I help you? Oh, Kiwi. You go bark. Beep. 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 December the 29th of 1977, Richard would claim his first victim. It was a 51-year-old man, and now this man was helping his wife. He was in his driveway helping his wife carry groceries in, and Richard would go by and shoot him for no apparent reason, and then he just left. So that was Richard's first victim. Weeks later, um, Richard tried to enter a home, and the door was locked. Now, Richard would later go on to say that if a door was locked, he knew that that meant he wasn't welcome. So he would just, if he found the door locked, he would just leave and, um, you know, he wouldn't try to get in anyway because he, he felt like he just wasn't welcome if the door was unlocked. But now if the door was, or if the door was locked, he wasn't unwelcome. He was unwelcome. But if the door was unlocked, he would enter homes. And on one occasion, um, he was inside a couple's home and they come home and they found him in there and they found that their stuff had been gone through the house had been ransacked he had even urinated and defecated in their um, infant child's bed so he would break into homes and do things like that he would urinate on their stuff and defecate on them and go through their stuff and steal a couple of items but he would do that to the unlocked houses January the 11th, 1978, Richard attacked one of his neighbors after he had asked her for a cigarette. Now, he restrained her and held her there until she gave him the whole pack of cigarettes. January 23rd, 1978, Richard would claim his second victim. Um, his second victim was a 22-year-old female who was three months pregnant. Now, she was home alone, and she was taking out her trash, and then Richard um, went into her house, and when she re-entered her home, Richard shot her um, three times, and that killed her. Richard shot and killed her. He started having sex with her dead body, and the whole time he was having sex with her dead body, he was stabbing her with a butcher knife. This guy seriously has mental problems. And to me, honestly, I feel like the hospital staff, the doctors and stuff, 
could have prevented all these people from dying. I feel like they failed. And his mother taking him off his medication and getting him an apartment. Seriously. Okay, so back to the story. I got off something, but this just bothers me. This could have been prevented. So he, you know, he stabbed her body while having sex. Well, when he was done um, with that, he tried, he cut off one of her um, nipples and he cut out various organs. He ate those, took those, ate them, drank her blood. Um, and before he left the house, he actually went out in the yard, gathered up dog feces and stuffed it down her neck and her throat. Um, so this was just a very brutal, brutal murder. I mean, just gruesome murder. It was just horrible. January 27th, 1978, Richard would claim four more victims. One victim was a 38-year-old female. Uh, Richard killed her. He had sex with her body. He sodomized her several times with a knife. He cut her stomach open, took out various organs. Um, he, her throat was cut. Uh, there was a failed attempt to remove an eyeball. Um, so he was just, he, he just treated women horrible. Like he brutally murdered women. Now there was some male, uh, two male victims. And I'm just gonna double check the ages because I don't want to tell you something wrong. Um, but her body was found in her bedroom along with her six-year-old son who had been shot twice. So as you see the difference between the male and the female, how he did. And a family friend was found in the hallway. He had been shot directly in his head. And then there was a 22-month-old um, baby that had been at the house at the time. Now, they couldn't find him, but then later... Um, Later, he um, told where the baby was and what he had done. He um, had took the 22-month-old 22 baby home and mutilated the body and took various organs and things out and, and drank the blood and stored the organs and ate some of the organs and then stored some for later and then dumped it out of church. Now, the police would go on to say that the scenes of his murders was just so gruesome that they were just shocked. Now, what finally led to his arrest was a handprint and a footprint at his latest uh, murder scene. And that's what actually ended up catching him. Um, Richard went on to say, although he killed people, um, it wasn't his fault because he had to do it to save his own life. And that people, anybody else, any other person would do the same thing to save their own life. That he had to do it because of his medical conditions. He didn't have a choice. 8th, 1979, Richard was found guilty of six counts of first-degree murder, and the jury reject, rejected the not guilty plea for insanity, and he was sentenced to die in the gas chamber. On the 26th, 1980, Richard was found dead in his cell, and what he had done is he had a uh, been stockpiling or saving and keeping his medications when the jailers would give them to him and what he did is he committed suicide by taking those pills so he never made it to the gas chamber he took his own life on december 26 1980. i don't know about you guys what you guys think but i personally think like i said earlier that all of these people could have been saved if they would have just kept this man in the hospital and continued getting him the help that he needed. He was mentally ill, and I believe that all of this could have been prevented. I believe this is a case where the hospitals and the doctors failed society, Be, and they could have saved these people, and his mother could have even possibly saved these people if she would have just kept giving him his medication and monitoring what she was supposed to do. Let me guys know what you guys think down in the comments. And as always, if there's any stories that you want me to cover, just list them in the comments and I, I'll cover those and I'll research them and get the facts and details and cover those stories as well. And as always, you guys stay safe. Be careful out there. You never know what kind of people is out there. 
and I'll see you guys next time.